Oh, don't mind me, just soaking in my rooftop hot tub in my own dream home in Tears of the Kingdom. Okay, look, real talk, it's not a hot tub, it's a pond, and the pond came with a fish, and I wanted to see what fish it was, so I picked it up, and it's my pet fish, and I was like, oh god, it's in my inventory, but that's okay, I can put it back in the water, right? And then it was dead! I killed my only friend! They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine, when you're not Hello, my fellow Hylians! Welcome today as I share with you what I definitively believe to be the best thing in the entirety of Tears of the Kingdom. And no, it's not an infinite auto-respawning supply of plus 11 temporary heart full restore food that you will just passively gain for just existing in the world, which is amazing. But it is the ability to have your very own home that you can custom build in exactly the way that you want with the rooms that you want, giving it the services that you want, which is not only an incredibly satisfying Stardew Valley esque Harvest Moon Animal Crossing itch to scratch within Tears of the Kingdom, but it's incredibly practical and useful too for reasons that we'll go over. And as an extension of this, we can also unlock a farm to turn us into a right proper homestead, having, again, as I just said, an endless supply of ridiculous food if you set it up correctly with the little trick that I'll be sharing with you. For now then, let's start with the house before we head to the garden. The house then, you want to head to Tarry Town, and you want to get there quick, so don't tarry. <laughs> All right, now we are here, son and done. We want to go find uh, the man, the myth, the legend, the greatest guy in all of Hyrule. It is, of course, Hudson, who is having a little bit of a crisis regarding his daughter, who is a Gerudo with Hudson's hairstyle. Hello. I have a lot of questions. But, of course, Link is ever the helpful guy, so talk to Hudson again right next to where you just spoke to him, and then head upstairs, barge into the room, and uh, talk to Madison. Have a chat, and then follow her out to have a bit of a Gerudo lesson, and choose Varbar as the answer, and you'll get it right. Following that, we need to help Madison get on uh, the rail car and uh, go see her father. We do this by blocking the vision of the guy who is just trying to do his job and charge people for use of it so she can get on it for free. And I did that with this setup, which is totally, completely... Uh, <laughs> Uh, most efficient way of doing this, you can do it however you want to, including just creating, I don't know, fire in front of him so the smoke blocks it. In any case, follow Madison down, either by gliding over or using the rail yourself by paying for it at uh, Heige here, and then once we arrive, we have to help uh, Hudson out with this hot air balloon. We need to dye it yellow, and for that we need 10 Sunderlions. They are found all over Sky Islands, I imagine you have loads of them by now. If not, again, yeah, Sky Islands everywhere. Give him 10 and we'll get a lovely sweet cutscene, head back to the village, and sadly it is time for Madison to depart to the desert. But with Hudson's loss comes our gain. Was that overly cruel? As we can now talk to Ronson and buy our dream home. This is wonderful. It costs 1,500 rupees, so you are going to need a little bit of a supply, but fortunately we do have a rupee farming guide up on the channel, including a duplication method, so get that while it's hot. And once acquired then, we get given a plot of land. This plot of land just happens to oh so conveniently be right next to Rasitaki Wak Shrine, which is the place I would want my home if I could choose. And now we can quite literally do anything we want with it. Well, nearly anything. We talk to uh, Grantison here and we get started with two free rooms. You can then buy an additional up to 15 different room blocks that you can stitch together like Lego however you want within the confines of this rope to create quite literally, as they've been saying, your dream house. It is magnificent! This is my jam! I love this 
kind of stuff. I am a sucker for it. Creating the most beautiful, aesthetically pleasing custom creation that might serve no real purpose in the greater scope of the game. But oh, it makes me feel good. Though in this case, there is actually some really useful things as part of this. In any case, when you do talk to him and ask to buy extra rooms, you'll see that, yeah, you have quite the list of them. A lot of them are just aesthetics or shapes to help extend and mold your house however you want, but there is uh, things like weapon stands, bow stands, and shield stands, which outside of being a cool way to display your equipment, serves a really good place to store weaponry that either you have grown attached to but don't want to take up a slot in your inventory, so just leave them there, or something powerful that you don't want to use until you have a boss you know you need it for, but again, you don't want it to take space, so you can leave it there. Remember, we can always teleport back here, so that's really good to use this as essentially extra storage for all three categories. We have a gallery that will let you have any picture that you want that you have taken with your camera, so that's kind of a nice little flavor. We have a shrine for upgrading your stamina and your health once you've got enough orbs. We've got a kitchen for cooking, we've got a bed to change the time of day, and we even have a stable that we can keep a horse here, which is nice too, to have our own extra remote stable. Everything else is pretty much just for style points, though the pond, as I mentioned at the start, does at least come with a regularly respawning fish that heals a heart and obviously you can cook, which again feels mean considering it's supposed to kind of be you're just pond pet fish, but hey, Link's gotta do what Link's gotta do. So yeah, genuinely, there's some really useful things here that you can all condense into this house that's easily teleportable to and just very satisfying to have. This is how mine ended up, which I am very quite pleased with. I've got my bed and a little nook, got the kitchen over there, and even a little study for Link. We've got upstairs where we've got the armor and the weapons and the shields to be displayed, and the stables outside. It's all very nice. I like the shape I've gone with it, and basically very chuffed. So that's that, and again, you will need a lot of rupees to buy all 15 pieces, an average of about 450 each, so it's definitely something fun to work on and grow as you play through the game. But of course, as I mentioned, what is a home without a garden filled with growing vegetables? Though in this case, the garden isn't strictly tied to the house, but it is definitely a sort of management thing that I think belongs along with it when I tell you guys about it. So let's go unlock Link's own personal farm that will let you repeatedly generate ridiculously powerful food that will make your life a lot easier. Again, plus 11 temporary hearts. That is incredible. For this then, we want to head to Hatano Village. You may recognize this from Breath, but but it has changed quite a bit in the interim between the games. And what we're going to do here is head towards the school, where class is hopefully in session. If it's not, it's because you need to change the game time to noon, so sit at any fire, go to any bed, you can just create a fire right outside the school, which seems like a bad thing to do now that I say that out loud. But in any case, just Camp outside the school for however many hours until it gets to noon, because that's totally not a weird thing to do as long as you're Link. Then head inside and talk to the teacher, and you will be tasked with going to get a picture of the calamity. You do that by heading to Impa's house all the way in Kakariko Village upstairs, snap a quick pic, and head back and show the now blown away children. Next up is is a bit of cooking class where we need to make monster dishes with monster essences. And to do this, we want to use the Hylian rice that we get given as a reward for part one here, go buy our monster essence from Tarrytown itself, and then go buy the Goron spice from Goron City, shockingly, and then cook that all up, maybe in your lovely new home. I mean, that seems to make sense to me. And once again, you will have taught valuable lessons to these growing young minds. And the main lesson that we learn here is no good deed goes unrewarded in Hyrule, for we are gifted, as now Professor Link, exclusive use of the school field. So we can hop down to said school field, have a talk to its tender, and we can request something to be grown. What this will mean is every couple in game days, we will have a new field of food to collect. So if you requested tomatoes, well then you come back and 
and you have a lot of them. And these restore a heart each. Obviously, they can be cooked up nicely. That's not bad. However, Uma here can grow something very specifically special. Hearty food. And not just any hearty food. She can grow hearty radishes. And that's important because there's two types of hearty radishes. There's normal hearty radishes, and you'll find them on Sky Islands. One of them is guaranteed here. But you can also find big hearty radishes, which you can then ask her to plant, which will result in more guaranteed big hearty radishes. Now, eventually, after the couple in-game days, you can come back and grab your now two big hearty radishes. And you might be like, oh, that's only two? But two hearty radishes, one golden apple, incredibly easy to have a supply of golden apples, and you create the full restore plus 11 temporary hearts dish. Which means you can, yes, have a huge supply of these consistently just every now and then, every hour or so, pop over to this farm and grab the radishes and then carry on with your adventure. And it's a really nice way to not have to worry about where you're going to get some powerful food from if you're about to face a boss. And I think that is incredibly good. And it's just very satisfying to have your own custom home, your own little growing field. And again, yeah, very kind of Harvest Mooney Stardew Valley Animal Crossing. And I can't deny how just mm, I find this stuff and I'm so happy there's a little bit of it in Tears of the Kingdom. In any case, I hope you have found this useful and I hope you are now racing off to uh, do it yourself. Like if you've enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more. Consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below. And until we meet again, a good boy. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a day Daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice to reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is uh goodbye.